Turning to the news, the first item that caught my attention is that I recognize that uh, that Prime Minister uh, uh, Alexis Cyprus had uh, resigned uh, as the uh, Prime Minister of Greece after uh, having turned out to be a uh, complete hypocrite. Now, this is a communist who campaigned on a communist agenda, uh, telling the Greeks that they were entitled to uh, monies being provided by other countries and that they were entitled to their pensions and they were entitled to their overpaid government jobs and they were entitled to all manner of, uh, of government handouts. They were entitled. And that, that, this, uh, that this notion that other Europeans should not fund these entitlements made the, the Europeans terrorists, made the Europeans blackmailers. Uh, I mean, it was the most ridiculous um, political rhetoric that I may have ever heard, and yet he won election based upon that rhetoric. And then he encouraged Greeks to, to say that they supported, uh, that they were opposed to, I should say, the, uh, the Greek bailout. And they voted 61% in opposition to the bailout. And then he acquiesced to the terms of the bailout. So members of his Shariza party, his communist party, have said, the hell with him. So they've, they pulled their support away from him, and they've gone off and said, we're just going to form a new party. It'll be called the Popular Unity Party. That's, you know, communism. We're all united, and we're all popular. Popular Unity. That's the new uh, communist party, and they're going to hold new elections. And uh, the head of the new Popular Unity Party says, if it's necessary for us to cancel the memorandum that uh, our prime minister just signed and that we approved as a governing body, with the Europeans after they have given us another, I don't know what it was, 15, 20, 30 billion dollars more. Now then we'll do it and we'll uh, exit the euro now that they've given us the money. That's the mentality of, uh, of immoral individuals. It's the mentality of the Ukrainians, for example. Give us the money and then we'll renege on the agreement. It's called theft. <laughs> yeah. I, I would call it theft. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's called theft. If you if you take something and uh, you know and you say you know, let's say you loan me a hundred dollars, and then you were like, hey, can I get my hundred dollars back? And I was just like, no, no, I pretty much just robbed you. <laughs> no, I said, pretty much just robbed you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have. Uh, what about that agreement that you signed in writing that said that you agreed to these terms and we're going to pay me back under this uh, standard and provide interest at this rate? What about all that? Doesn't matter. I don't care. Not paying. <laughs> Not paying you. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just going to exit uh, wait, wait. our agreement. They'd probably go with this. Well, I don't have the money, so come and get it. <laughs> you know. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, no. I have. I've, you, I've got the money. You gave it to me. Well, yeah, but no, they spent that. They don't have that money anymore. I don't well, know they want to give them the money anymore. four or five days ago. I mean, a movie just came out. I had to go see that movie. You know, I know I told you I needed the money, but I, I just this movie came out. I had to go see it. And you know, you can't go to a movie without buying pop and popcorn. Yeah. So that, that's what I use the hundred bucks on. I don't have any more. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's stuff. <laughs> yeah. In exchange, this article says for uh, another. Um, Oh, I was uh, I was wrong. Uh, I apologize for being wrong. It was uh, 86 billion euros, 95 billion dollars, 61 billion pounds. But since we're uh, we're going to use dollars here as our uh, as our number, they just received 95 billion dollars, and Cyprus had signed uh, on behalf of Greece, and the Parliament approved the agreement. To, uh, to accept that money under very specific terms and conditions. Now, this says, had agreed to painful state sector cuts. Painful state sector cuts. So, if, uh, if, Scott, if the federal government uh, were providing you with a um, with, uh, $1,000 a month uh, pension, $1,000 a month to pay for your health care for you and your family, a thousand dollars a month on a food allowance. A thousand dollars a month on um, on a uh, 
on um, an educational allowance. Don't forget my rent. Give okay, rent on a thousand dollars a month for a rent allowance. So they were giving you all that stuff, and they cut it to seven hundred and fifty dollars a month for each of those things. Have they pained you? <laughs> How is that painful? Now, I, now I understand that if the government was taking five hundred dollars a month for you from you to fund somebody else's rent, food, and uh, and. Uh, um, and other manners of entitlements, if they were taking um, $500 a month to pay for somebody else's health care, $500 a month to pay for somebody else's food, some $500 a month to pay for somebody else's rent, and $500 a month to pay for somebody else's pension a month from you, and they decided that, that rather than taking $2,000 a month from you, now they're going to take $4,000 a month from you, you could call that painful. That would be very painful. <laughs> that would be so, so how is this painful when all Greece agreed to do is to, uh, is to uh, diminish the amount of, uh, of monies that were being paid by the government to, uh, to Greek citizens as opposed to agreed to uh, that the amount that Greek citizens were going to be paying the Greek government was going to be enormously increased. How can that be a painful? It shouldn't be painful. How is a painful cut? It, it shouldn't be painful at all. You're still getting oh, you're God. still getting money that you you don't have to do anything more for. It, it shouldn't be that painful at all. <laughs> shouldn't be painful. Period. And and, and and nobody should look at that and say, oh, we really got to fix this. We got to make it so they can keep that they can keep their same amount of stuff that they're getting. It's it's the same thing here. Yeah. Uh, welfare benefits being cut shouldn't be something that, that painful? that's painful to anybody, and it shouldn't be no. something that we overly uh, we, we we bend over backwards to to maintain. Yeah, well, I don't think we should. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. We should just eliminate them. But this idea that eliminating a gratuity is painful, something you've done nothing for. It's not like gratuity, like you you decide that you go to a restaurant, and your choices are to uh, pay the waiter or waitress nothing, to pay the waiter or waitress 10% or 20% or 30%. They have performed some service for you, whether it be good or, uh, or not so good. And if, uh, if you deem that service to have been outstanding, you give them 20%. If you know, if a service is a subpar, you might give them 10%. If, the, uh, if there was, the service was actually uh, given in a mean-spirited way, they messed up everything that you got, and it was a bad experience, you may choose to give them nothing. Mm -hmm. But tell me, how, how is any one of those things painful? They're not. They're not. They're not. But, that's, again, this is the problem This is the problem with the world today, apparently, is that everybody thinks that... Um, but, yeah, but go the other way. Let's say that, uh, that I'm walking by a restaurant. I'm walking by a restaurant, and uh, and everybody that walked by the restaurant has uh, ten dollars lifted from their purse or wallet to fund those that are in the restaurant, who's that's actually closed because they they provided no benefit, they provided no food, they provided no service. So what you have is a bunch of people loitering at this restaurant, doing nothing, and uh, and they are lifting a ten dollar bill from everybody's purse and uh, pocket. That, uh, that walks by. Well, Have you pained them if uh, they only get to lift a $5 bill from everybody's pocket that walks by for doing nothing? Well, one, stop taking that route to work. Take a different <laughs> route. And then two, uh, you haven't pained them at all. Uh, it's, if somebody comes and robs you, and they rob you the first day they rob you, they only get, they get $100, and then they rob you a second day, and they only get 80 should that should the robber be offended? Should the robber, the, has, the, has the robber yeah, has the robber been pained that he only stole eighty dollars from you? Took eighty dollars on the second attempt on robbing you, and and then only got uh, sixty dollars the the next time. Yeah. Was that austerity towards the robber? Or or did you just learn that hey you know what I'm not I'm not going to take cash robbed anymore? <laughs> it, it, it's it's. It doesn't make any sense, and it and it's it, it's robbery. It's robbery. It's it's theft. It's so it's the uh, the head of the uh, the new popular unity party said that it's uh, it's time that we smash the eurozone dictatorship. 
We smash. So we're not going to take any personal responsibility. We're not taking any responsibility for being bankrupt. We're not going to spend take any responsibility of uh, of robbing productive people in our country uh, and robbing uh, businesses in our country to the point that there are virtually no productive businesses left in our country and no productive people engaged in our country and. Uh, and uh, we have created an entire country of dependence. We're not going to take any responsibility for that. We had nothing to do with overpaying our government uh, workers and providing them with two, um, uh, two large pensions and from overtaxing our businesses so that they dried up. We'll take no responsibility. Nope. We're not going to even take responsibility for agreeing to the terms of another bailout and then reneging on them. No, what we're going to do is we're going to label those that provided the money as dictators. And we have to smash the Eurozone dictatorship. <laughs> what's wrong with stupid. these idiots? That's just stupid. God, what is wrong with these idiots? I mean, imagine, the, and, and you know what's amazing? Is the rhetoric is popular enough that this new popular party is the second most popular in, uh, in Greece. <laughs> I, I'm just going to tell you, it you know, is. Uh, I, I, I think they're going to work it out. I think they'll figure it out. The Greece probably won't be an issue. <laughs> oh, man. The Islamic State uh, today demolished a Christian uh, monastery in central uh, uh, Syria. Um, do you care that one religious group uh, demolished the uh, the uh, a monastery used over the centuries by another religious group? No, I don't care. I don't care either. I, but but I do think it's I do think it's worth noting that it has occurred because what it demonstrates is that with Islam there is no tolerance. Well, there is no choice. I was going to say I, I care because of what what you can use it to to show. I mean, you right. show that they they don't have friends. They don't have all oh, we can tolerate these people. It shows that they're against everything. Right, and that they will absolutely give provide no choice other than surrender to Islam. And it also says, did they, uh, did they build a, uh, a new monastery? No. Did they build a civic center uh, in the spot that, uh, that is available to all people? No. So what is Islam when it destroys? Oh, there's a word for that. They're destructive. Welcome back to Shadow Mist. It's interesting that uh, the Islamic State, um, to just underscore the point that Islam is destructive, and that Islam is uh, intolerant, and, and and I don't have a problem with somebody being intolerant of those things which are are despicable. I, in fact, I would encourage us uh, as, a, as a species to be intolerant of and to be uh, opposed to those things which are deadly, deceitful, destructive, damning, uh, and perverted, uh, particularly when they prey on innocent women and children, as does uh, Islam particularly when they terrorize those who cannot defend themselves and they come and approach the defenseless civilians uh, with, uh, with all manner of weaponry, then I think it is appropriate to be um, intolerant of those things. And there are times when it's even appropriate to be destructive, when, it is to, when it's time to, to demolish those things which um, are used to, in a harmful way. You know, I think that, for example, America would be safer if we were to demolish its military capability. I actually heard a, a quote yesterday that I wish more, it was from a politician, and I wish more politicians would, would understand it. Um, he was talking about the military, and he goes, I think, I think we as Americans need to understand that our military can't fix anything. Right. And he even said, no. that, you know, the only thing that the military can do is stop things. Yeah, really, and the military can't really stop much of anything, and that's even wrong there. What the military can do is it can kill and it can destroy. And those are the two things, kill and destroy. Um, so those are, the, those are the only two things that militaries exist to be able to do, to kill and destroy. Now, if you, when, when this is really a misunderstood uh, concept, uh, killing does not necessarily stop if you kill an individual, you have stopped that individual, 
mm-hmm. because you've you've uh, it's just like if you uh, destroy a uh, a tank, uh, you've stopped the tank. But if the source of uh, of individuals uh, uses your killing of that individual to recruit more individuals so that rather than having uh, one individual coming at you who you've killed and therefore stopped, you now have a hundred coming at you, did you stop the onslaught or did you uh, exacerbate it? It exacerbated it. Yeah. Now, if... If in the uh, the tank example, if you used your military to destroy a tank and therefore stopped the tank, what if it enraged those who were operating the tank to the point that, well, that they signed an, a, uh, an agreement uh, whereby uh, they would um, uh, diminish a few of their centrifuges and uh, do a chemical process that could be reversed on some of their uh, overly enriched uh, nuclear-grade uh, material, uh, so that they could buy thousands more tanks. Did you stop them, or did you accelerate their activity? Well, you stopped them, or you, or you accelerated their activity. Yeah, accelerated their activity, yeah. So the, the military can't, can only stop things if it is willing to be pervasive. For example... Um, and uh, you could solve the problem of Islamic terrorism in Iraq by uh, by turning Iraq into glass. You could kill everyone there, and then there would be no influence of Islamic terrorism. That that is the, the morality of that is not acceptable. In what in in the in the cases that you're using though, because I, I, I do think that all right. So if you're using a military as a defensive thing, so somebody's attacking you, stopping an attack. You yes. stop them from attacking you because you. When, when was the last time America did that? Oh, I'm not saying that America's ever. I'm not saying America's ever done that. But I'm I'm saying that if you just take a a military, just don't put a nation to it, and you say right. that this military, well, the only time we're ever going to use this is if somebody attacks us. Yeah, and, and not just attack our military because if you're attacking your military, then if you didn't have the military, they wouldn't have attacked you. Yeah. But uh, to, to make, put it in a in a in a different light. Where a uh, we're going to to uh, have a protective force so that if another nation attacks our citizens on our soil and tries to invade us, we will have the ability to uh, to repel them. You don't have a circumstance where that's happened in America, do you? No, you don't. And, and but I'm saying that, there, okay. like you said at the start, there is a time. There is a time to fight, and there is a time that, you know, hey, yeah. this is... Yeah. This. If, uh, if somebody yeah. attacks one of my children I mean, and I go. have the ability to stop them, I'm going to use whatever means is at my disposal to stop them from harming my exactly. children. Exactly, and we even have cases where where, where Yah did that. I mean, Absolutely. He, you know, he flooded the All right. great yeah. area. All right, uh, protect, so, protect his children so. from those uh, that were trying to uh, to kill them. There, yes, there, is a, true. There, there is a time for for, right. for, for military, for, for, but there is not uh, a time for the military that the United States has. Actually, did the, the Isra- Israelites require a military? I don't think so. Uh, Scott, you brought up a good point, and I want to continue the that thought. If there were a a country that had the had a motivation for wanting to invade and occupy. Uh, your country, let's say America, and that you could create a scenario where they not only had a motivation to invade and occupy, but the ability to project a force uh, sizable enough to invade, and uh, and then a they had the wherewithal to occupy a uh, the nation, and that their occupation could could in some way create a benefit for them. If you could create that kind of a scenario and you could credibly say there is this nation out there that that could somehow want this and could somehow have the ability to do this and then could somehow benefit from it. And I'm going to tell you, you can't come up with an, a yes on any one of those three. You can't do it as, a, as the United States. And by the way, never could. You, you, yeah, you can't you do it never as could. the United States. Then I, I would say a defense, then a real defensive force would have some uh, some merit. Yeah, uh, we name the same country. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, Israel. Israel. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Got no issue with, with them having the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. Now, 
Um, that being the, uh, the case, um, we get to uh, this question that I have for you. Um, we declared a war on terrorism, didn't we? Yes. Did we, when, and we invaded Afghanistan first. Is terrorism more prevalent or less prevalent in Afghanistan uh, after we have been fighting that war on terrorism for the past 15 years? It's been about as effective as the war on drugs. <laughs> okay, so there's vastly more terrorism. There is, yes. Than, and, uh, and it's far um, more deadly in Afghanistan than it was before we invaded and, uh, and tried to stop it. Well, okay, let's, with, go, let's go to Iraq. Just, well, no, be, before it was uh, we're fighting al-Qaeda, and now it's Hamas, ISIS, all, all these yeah. other things. There, okay, uh, right. So let's go to Iraq. Um, under Saddam Hussein, how often was there a terrorist act perpetrated in Iraq uh, under Saddam Hussein? I can't remember. I can't remember hearing about any. Yeah, there's there's one that is uh, is touted where he uh, gassed the uh, the Kurds, okay. but they, but that wasn't a terrorist act because those Kurds in that community had taken up arms as Iraqis against the Iraqi government on behalf of the Iranians. And so, in that case, they were armed, and it was an act of war. In fact, even an act of self-defense. But that's the only act of terrorism that you can ascribe of any meaning to Iraq under Saddam Hussein. Now, is there any terrorism being perpetrated in Iraq today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Iraq the ground zero for Islamic terrorism worldwide? Yeah. I... As a matter of fact, this, uh, this monastery that was uh, bulldozed, how about the people? You know what happened to the people that were uh, associated with that monastery and their families and their children and their daughters in particular? Uh, I'm guessing either killed or, or sold into slavery of some sort. They were uh, all enslaved. That is correct. All enslaved. That's weird. Huh? With the exception of the, uh, the, the, the leaders, of course, they will be killed. But, but, but they're, at this point, they're all captives. They're all enslaved. So... Um, the, I did the math on uh, on Iraq prior to uh, its present state, where it's the Sunni-Shia civil war. And I determined by going through the 10 years of Saddam Hussein's rule uh, and the uh, – uh, and emphasizing the, the previous five years, and then uh, went through, that at that point, the five years after we deposed him. And I compared the quantity and, and, uh, and consequence of terrorism in Iraq before we declared a war on terrorism in Iraq and after. And I found that the, the change was over 1 million percent. We exacerbated terrorism in Iraq by declaring war on it by using our military. We exacerbated terrorism in Iraq by 1 million percent. So did the military stop it? No, definitely not. No. You, you can't. You're never gonna. You never. You never stop anything by being offensive. Right. So the uh, the military couldn't stop terrorism, and it most certainly didn't build anything that was beneficial. It didn't create anything that is beneficial. Rather than solving a problem, our military deployment in Afghanistan and Iraq, as well as in Libya, and in particularly in Libya made a bad situation and, much worse didn't it and, yeah definitely and let's so why would we continue to praise our military and the deployment of it when every time we use it it makes a bad situation worse well take it a step farther all the a lot of our economic our, our debt is due to our military all right and the, there's nothing that we spend more money on than the military and what, what where do you think well we it, do yeah there are two things we actually spend more money on than the military you know what they are uh, probably uh, the benefits and things like that. Medica Medicare, uh, Medicaid combined. Uh, so uh, providing government-sponsored, government-controlled uh, uh, health care. And number two, uh, um, Social Security, both of which are Ponzi schemes. Those are the I, big two, and then the military is number three under those. So, but I, I mean, that's these are the things that when you when you're when you're trying to balance your budget, you got to look at where where most of your money's going. Right. And then make the cuts from there. You got to pull government out of. Well, you're, we're not going to do any of these things. But you got to. Uh, you got to. 1965 is when uh, LBJ, creating the Great Society, uh, introduced uh, Medicare. And uh, from that time, he said that uh, that the federal play in the uh, in the healthcare business in America would be uh, 
no more than 1%. At the time, America was the uh, number one country in the world in terms of quality of its health care and affordability of its health care. Since that time, we are uh, the most expensive health care uh, uh, country in the world, and our health care isn't even in the top 50 in terms of quality. So uh, uh, we, we nationalized it, we socialized it, and we made it worse. Why would you continue to go down that path like Obama did with Obamacare to create a, a greater socialization, a greater federalization of health care when it has been so counterproductive? And no matter what you do in these things, we are simply making a bad situation worse. Glenn, what do you think about um, the world as we're seeing it, whether it be uh, Greece, the, uh, the activities of the Islamic State, or the benefit of, of uh, our military fighting a war against uh, terror? Well, uh, I know how things are going to be uh, because I know a very knowledgeable individual once said that they will say peace, peace, but there will be no peace. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, they will say peace, peace, but there will be no peace. Yeah, yeah. the peace in Islam is uh, I want a piece of this and I want a piece of that. Um, so uh, um, do you think that, our, that the United States military, particularly with its new fancy uh, uh, fighter plane, you know, they, uh, the, the turkey, the F-35 turkey? Yeah, the F-35 turkey. Do you think that the F-35 turkey is going to be uh, effective in, uh, in thwarting Islamic terrorism? I think it's uh, it's totally toast. I mean, we haven't seen. I mean, ever since we've had all this murder mania mm -hmm. among the like the aircraft manufacturers and stuff, and yes. you know, it, it, it's nothing but one boondoggle. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. It's everything so compartmentalized, nothing mm -hmm. works. The, the rest are hooked on the Navy version for the supercarriers mm -hmm. had to be rejiggered. The 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 aiming helmet thing, the weapon system doesn't work the um yep. the uh, they, we haven't even heard about the supposed uh, vertical takeoff version oh they how many, they, how well many that's because that? pratt's engines uh are uh have failed they don't perform right. as they were supposed to perform and so you've got uh, you know you've got an airplane designed by a committee which is uh performing like a camel uh, yeah, but, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, yeah, the, um, the, the, how many, how many Harriers nosed into the deck before they finally got those somewhat stable? Like yeah. Even the Ospreys, you know, right. even the Ospreys. Oh, well, the, yeah, but you know, the Harriers and the Offspray are, uh, are airplanes that require 40 to 50 hours of maintenance for one hour of uh, flight time. I mean, that's, that's like saying that, you know, I think that, uh, that I can take out, uh, six camels with a million-dollar uh, drone uh, dropping a uh, a five hundred thousand-dollar um, cruise missile, uh, I, yeah. how, how much do you how much do you lose each time that you're successful? I would rather, if I were a troop on the ground, I'd much rather know that I was going to have A tens coming in for close air support. And that's 18 Super Hornets, you know. Yeah. And, the upper and uh, line, did you uh, did you read the results of the of the Iraq War and recognize that the A-10 killed as many uh, Americans and under uh, friendly fire as it did uh, enemy? Uh, I, yeah, I'm very tough. I have I have not investigated. Yeah, I did. I did every. I analyzed the uh, every death in, of an American in Iraq over the first uh, two years of that invasion, and the A-10 was the primary killer of Americans. All right, well, so send the Patsies in for closer. <laughs> but, but, um, but, you know, I mean, I... I might say, How about just not go? How about just not go? I, yeah, well, no, I mean, but, yeah, well, what I'm saying is... Uh, there's, yes. There's a recipe, uh, yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. F-22 Raptors flying high cover for... F-35 turkey, yeah. you know, that's a recipe yeah. for getting whacked. Yeah, why don't you tell me how the, uh, how our submarine fleet is going to help us uh, against Islamic terrorism? Yeah, that's, that's, that's well, you, what do you have? You have the boomers and the attacks of the government. Right. Yeah, we don't have any value whatsoever under any circumstance. Uh, anyway, it's a, it, is, uh, it is all uh, absolute craziness, and and there's only really one viable enemy. It, you can't create a scenario whereby you can uh, uh, paint Russia 
as a country that would have a motivation to invade America, the capability uh, to invade and occupy America, or that would get a benefit out of invading and occupying America. And the same thing could be true is true with China. In fact, China would uh, it would be suicide for uh, for China to do so, and Russia doesn't even have the motivation nor the ability. So well, why exactly do we why do we have this military? Who are we well, going to use it uh, against? Uh, well, we're going to foment proxy wars and so on, because that's what they've been doing. The, the idea of a peer-to-peer -peer major power war is unthinkable. And it would, right. you know, uh, you'd have, uh, you know, entire uh, infrastructure of their own countries decimated within hours, right. you know, and so it's just unthinkable. So they have to fiddle around with proxy wars. Yes, that's what we do. We, we fought a proxy war against... Uh, uh, the USSR, that so that we uh, we empowered and armed the Taliban and Al Qaeda to uh, fight a proxy war and bit us. We fought a proxy war against the Iranians after we allowed the Ayatollah back uh, by arming uh, and equipping Saddam Hussein. Turned around and uh, bit us. Uh, we fought a. Uh, we, we are just constantly fighting proxy war. You know how much we're spending now on uh, proxies to go fight uh, the Islamic State, $1 million per recruit. I would like your uh, input, uh, Glenn, on something that uh, I was considering this morning. Everybody's having a conniption fit that uh, Hillary Clinton uh, not only used personal computers for, uh, for classified uh, information, but that she wiped her computers clean uh, about uh, Benghazi correspondence and then had them wiped clean by a company that has no uh, security uh, clearance and how that all of those things are uh, are crimes that uh, carry very substantial uh, jail terms. I don't know why why even any of that is an issue compared to Hillary Clinton knowingly and de deliberately ignored the testimony that was coming out of Benghazi from the FBI and the State Department and excuse me, the CIA and the State Department altered the information that she was given, covered up the information that she was given, and created a scenario that rather than blaming the attack on Ansar Sharia, friends of Sharia law, whom we, who the State Department knew was perpetrating an attack, blamed it instead falsely on a Christian movie and condemned the Christian movie. Why are, why are we fixated on the machine that she used as opposed to the consequence of her being deceitful in this way? Well, the one um, might be more important, but um, uh, in terms of what's prosecutable, I, I, th I think the foreign the Benghazi shenanigans, um, they're, they're more subject to things like plausible deniability, or, um, oh, no, she can't. She has no plausible deniability in knowing that it was answer Sharia. The CIA has made that right. emphatically clear. The CIA was, was, was working with and was arming answer Sharia. Answer Sharia used their knowledge of the U.S. Embassy that had been given to them by their, uh, their relationship with the U.S. CIA and they used American weapons. And the, the State Department knew it was answer Sharia because they knew the individuals who were part of answer Sharia. She's got no deniability there, and she's got no plausible deniability when she blamed it on the uh, the Christian movie. She was deliberately trying to shield Islam and blame Christianity for Benghazi. Right, right, well, right, and there are so many people with their hands in that, you know, in that, and there are so many people are dirty on that, and yeah, including the president, the Department of Foreign Relations stuff that they, right, right. that they. That they're, they're, there are many more people trying to cover it up. The, right, the but, but that should be something that would preclude her from, from being able to be elected while the other simply makes her uh, guilty of committing a what I would consider to be a fairly minor crime. Well, well, there's still multiple indictments possible. I personally like the new lawn signs, the new red, white, and law, blue lawn signs with pretty cursive writing on them that say, Hillary for prison 2016. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I just don't, I mean, personally, I don't see it. I, you know, when you look at the the crimes that have been perpetrated by politicians that have been overlooked, for example, uh, her husband perjuring himself under oath uh, regarding the Monica Lewinsky affair, mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a crime that if you don't prosecute, then you make a mockery of the entire justice system 
in America, and yet we didn't prosecute it. That's a crime that is serious, and yet uh, he was uh, reelected. So, right. so you know, I don't see crimes as being being a big deal with politicians. They're all criminals. Right. But when they deliberately aid and abet the enemy that kills Americans and exposes our our stupidity rel- relative to those enemies, and then blames the uh, the something on somebody who had nothing to do with it. Right. to try to uh, promote a political agenda that's caustic to America, that ought to matter. Right, it should. Uh, however, in terms of um, holding the attention of the American populace, in the case of the server, there's an actual piece of persisting physical evidence the computer itself. They can look and see it yeah. and write and read that. There, yeah. there are these other emails. Um, yeah. there's, there, there are more people actually, actually more, I think more likely to pay attention to that Oh, uh, considering yeah. foreign policy because, matters far too murky to be understood. Yeah, perhaps because you can talk about the computer in a on a politically correct show, and that since Republicans dominate the radio uh, talk show uh, um, uh, landscape, Realm. they're they're willing to talk about that, but they're not willing to talk about. The fact that Answer Sharia was known to the CIA and that Answer Sharia perpetrated the murder of Americans using American weapons because of the stupidity of Americans arming jihadists to take out Muammar Gaddafi. They're not willing to do that. Right. So the politicos don't want to touch that, and, and other people consider it too murky. The public considers it too murky to, to grasp. Yeah, but since the majority of Americans are, uh, are liberal, Who's going to be concerned that a computer was misused?